which picture profile do I use for my weddings, what's going to give me the best results. Um, and I'm going to focus on uh, inside when we're doing like bridal prep, outside when it's nice and sunny, and then the dreaded when it's uh, low light or sunset, which profiles do I use, and then how do I incorporate all them. So to break it down really quick, there's not one uh, picture profile I use. I use a mixture of about three typically, um, but I have two main ones that are like kind of like my go-to. So this is shot with the picture profile off. I went into uh, portrait mode and then I just bumped down the saturation one, the contrast and the sharpening. And this is a good picture profile if I want to go straight out of camera directly uh, up to YouTube. I'll, I'll take it into post and add a little bit of saturation, um, bump up the gamma uh, on the skin tones, and then throw on a vignette and I'm done in like 30 seconds. And that's when I wanna kick out something really, really quick. So the first picture profile I wanna talk to you guys about is um, S-Log2 and I use the EOS HD color settings um, and what you can do is change the different values of saturation and luminance by different numbers now that's the only part that i use of eos hd i've tried out both of them before um, but i really like what they did with the color i leave like the need the black levels everything else alone so in s-log 2 when i'm exposing to the right i'm actually how i base mine on is i expose for the midtones. That's what you really need to expose for. So you can decide if you want to crush the blacks or, you know, clip some of the highlights, but it's really strong point is is exposing for those midtones because if you have to bring up any of the levels, um it's going to look like garbage. I mean, the 8-bit Kodak is not that good when you start pushing some of those colors around if everything in the middle is not, you know, is compressed instead of stretched out. So when I hear the term, you know, exposed to the right or two stops over, I'm really focusing on the midtones. Now, when I'm focused on the subject is a person, the way that I do it is I set my, um, uh, I set my zebras to 80. And then as soon as I see any zebras on the face, I usually back it down, you know, one or two stops. So that way I know my skin tone look really good in the S-Log 2. It doesn't matter what picture profile you use. Sony is horrible. When you have skin tones and they're underexposed, they just look like garbage. Get anything that's underexposed or you're having some problems, it's really, really red and it just does not look good. And it really shows, especially what in the S-Log 2. And so this is where I really say exposed for those mid-tones to get the cleanest picture. Now let's talk about noise. So S-Log2 is known for having a lot of noise uh, in the footage, but I think that's very, very misleading because you think, hey, if I jack up the you know, ISOs, it's gonna introduce more noise and it's, it's really not. Because if you overexpose it and then crush everything down, you're gonna get rid of a lot of that noise. But where it struggles to have noise is not having enough information and everything's not bright enough. And then that's where you start seeing a lot of the noise that you wouldn't normally see, even if you jacked up the uh, ISO. So where do I use S-Log2? So a lot of times when I use S-Log2 is when I'm doing the first look, the ceremony, everything is out in bright sunlight. Um, that's when the S-Log2 is gonna shine. A lot of the weddings that we do here in Portland, um, it's very sunny and the bride and groom are usually in the shade or underneath a tree. So they're not exposed as well as all the background and everything. So this is where we use uh, S-Log2. It, 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 it takes a lot longer in post to develop uh, in color correct, the S-Log2. Um, but I'll link so, some LUTs below that uh, we use to help us get a, a, good, a good starting point. Um, but this is where S-Log2 really shines. Um, now, when we're doing makeup on the inside, that's really going to depend on how much light we can control uh, coming in, inside the room and if we're going for a very high contrast look or something that's a little bit more natural. So we'll bounce back and forth between S-Log2 and HLG3. Um, so I used to use Cine2 and HLG3. There are a lot of similarities, but definitely in like the highlights and when it comes in the raw, it's just it's I just feel it's it's not as harsh um, 
when it comes to Cine4 and HLG3. So that's kind of my go-to uh, inside. You don't have the dynamic range. So in places where I don't need the dynamic range, this is where I'm going to use the HLG3. And a lot of times like at sunset when I want a very high contrast look or when I'm putting the bride in, in front of a window and I want to make the whole room look dark, this is where I'm going to go to the HLG3. So I have two cameras. So I have the A7 III and I have the A7S2. And we know that the A7S2 is a beast when it comes to low light, but I much rather use the A7 III now. And it really has to do with uh, the color science, but the A7 III has way better color science. And I kind of want to talk about uh, ISO and you usually hear ISO in noise. And that's all, all I ever heard. But when I started doing higher ISOs, the 8-bit codec, it just becomes mushy uh, when you start jacking up those higher ISOs. A lot more fringing. Uh, the colors just muddy together. And so I didn't hear a lot of people talk about, um, you know, as the as the ISO goes up, the how it changes the colors. Um, so that's why I usually make sure I have a really, really fast lens uh, when I'm doing low light. But it's not necessarily my footage was noisy. It's just the colors weren't turning out the way that I wanted. And as soon as I started doing a, a little bit of grading, um, it just didn't look good. So definitely, um, you know, the A7S II has way better, high, you know, higher ISOs. But when I'm doing the low light, I'm trying to still keep my uh, ISO pretty low so that way I have a little bit better accurate colors and it just seems to work a lot better. And now I'll bounce between the HLG3 and then the Cine 2. I feel Cine 2 is better uh, in, in the shadows. They're about the same, but uh, I'll bounce uh, in between and it kind of just depends. Um, but this next season in 2020, I'm probably going to shoot more towards the HLG just because the raw offs and it just seems, the, it just doesn't seem as harsh when I'm doing a lot of the color grading. Now, when I do all my commercial work, that's all in S Log 2 and HLG 3. So when it comes to picture profiles, I've went online, I've <laughs> bought them all, uh, I've tried them all. Uh, I really like Cody Blue. Uh, for wedding, I don't think that these are a good picture profile. They're amazing when you're doing uh, real estate, uh, nature shots. If you watch his channel, he does a lot of outside nature and so you get those deep blues and those deep greens and they don't look as good for weddings so I kind of stay away from them uh, when I'm doing people in weddings. Um, now I did the EOS HD. I think their picture profiles are great if you're going straight out of camera. I really love them for taking still pictures but not for a flatter image. Now I really liked it on the A7S II with his color settings because all my skin tones were getting that green and yellow look. Now it's more of a red look, but if everything's exposed right, it looks really, really good. And everybody says, you know, they're compared to uh, the Canon colors, but the color science now in the A7 III is much better. So I don't use them as much, but I do like how he set those um, in his S-Log2 picture profile. Still very fat, so I can do a lot of color grading, push some stuff around, but the way that he, he tweaked the colors are really good. So when I get to a wedding shoot, I kind of scope out the place and say, okay, where do I need to use these different picture profiles and how am I going to match up? Because if I go from doing, um, you know, S-Log2 outside and the HLG3, they can kind of match up, but it's going to be easier if I shoot everything um, in the same profile. So I'll usually make a game, de game time decision. Which picture profile am I going to use for like the ceremony, the bridal prep, the first look? But now I can break that rule when it comes to the dance party because it's a whole change of scenery everything's dark and so it's not as noticeable when changing those picture profiles now the other thing i want to talk to you about is matching the picture profiles from camera to camera and i was i had no idea i thought like either my white balance was off i have different profiles and when i went from a camera that had like the 70 to 200 gm and then i had the exact same camera exact same profile but i had the f4 version and it renders colors a little bit different. I thought it was something in the picture profile. And so this is one thing that you kind of have to be careful about. I usually try to get, 
you know, now I have all GM lenses. So the colors from lens to lens still varies just a little bit in how it renders colors, but it's a lot more accurate. When I was making like Sigma lenses with their, you know, their art lenses with the GM lenses with Sony lenses, the colors were coming out a little bit different and I just had no idea. I thought I was doing something wrong on my camera. I thought the white balance was off. Um, but it really just depends on the lenses. And so I try to get, you know, the same make of lenses. And when it comes to color grading, it just helps me out. Thank you guys very much. If you guys have any more questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys very much.